There is so many different ways to add depth to your photography, but I personally think that the way I'm going to show you today is the absolute best way to add depth to your photos. Hey everybody, my name is Austin James Jackson. I'm a landscape photographer based here in the beautiful southern Utah area. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the best way to add depth to your image. Now, adding depth is obviously huge if you want to create compelling landscape photography. Now, we all want our images to jump off the page and appear to be more than just a two dimensional image and lucky for you it's actually much easier to add depth than you might think. For the sake of this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can add depth to your images in both Lightroom and in Photoshop so that no matter which software you're using you can work this into your existing workflow. Using Lightroom in my opinion is a little quicker and easier but it doesn't offer nearly the options or the results you can have when doing this in Photoshop in my opinion but I'll let you be the judge of that. Let's go ahead and get started in Lightroom. So what we're looking at here in Lightroom is actually a photo that I've already edited and you can go back I want to show you guys that you can do this to a photo either while you're editing it or you can even do it after the edit it's probably more ideal to go in and do it while you're editing but I know there's gonna be a lot of you guys out there that are gonna pick up on this tip and you're gonna to want to go back and fix some photos that you've made mistakes on before this is one that I was looking at where I felt like uh, this effect of adding a little more depth could really come in handy that I'm showing you guys today so I'll show you, like I said, first in Lightroom here. Now the main problem, why this image is lacking depth, and I mean, there, sure, there's a decent amount of depth, but the problem is there's too much overall contrast. So the foreground contrast looks all right, and maybe I might want to bring up the shadows just a touch, but the main problem is the background. There's too much contrast in these mountains that are too far away. So I want to portray that these mountains are really, really far away by adding a little less contrast to those mountains. So there's a few different ways you can do this. The way we're going to do it is by the masking tool here in Lightroom, which if you don't know how to use it, you definitely should learn because it's a great tool. And I want to do this probably using a radial gradient for this photo. I'm going to click and drag from the center and anything that's white is going to be part of my selection. So just in there. Now I can drag the contrast down and you can see how this affects the middle part of the scene. Now a lot of amateur and beginner photographers would go in here and they would jack this contrast up and they would really try and make those mountains look really bold. But you actually want to make them look less bold in order to add depth to your scene to show they're further away. So you can see as I drop this contrast, uh, the mountains get a little duller, uh, but that is okay because now I'm adding a little more depth and I wanna go in and I can re-add that saturation back as I drop the contrast. Because as I drop the contrast, it's usually gonna lower the saturation just a bit. Now you can see that's looking pretty good. You can go toggle the eyeball here if you wanna see what it's done. You can see that's looking pretty good to me. And then you can go in and do the opposite effect on the foreground. So I can go in um, and I'm going to use a linear gradient for this one. Go into my foreground and then I can add some contrast. Now I already have probably plenty of contrast in this one here, um, but if you wanted to go add some, like if you were doing this to a raw file or a photo that you hadn't worked on yet, this would be the ideal place to do it, um, is you could add some contrast there in the foreground. You can make some other adjustments. You can also do stuff in the midground too. So we want this foreground to be a little bit darker than the background. So I could go in here, I could increase the exposure just to make those mountains seem like they're a little bit further away. You could even use the curve here. So if I wanted to reduce the contrast, I would drag up on the bottom quarter and down on the top quarter. And that might be a little bit much. Somewhere right in there. Now you can see the difference in our image before and after. And I might even go back, fix the shadows there. There we go, before and after. So you can see the image has a little bit more depth. Right now there's just too much contrast uh, and all that contrast really just takes away from the depth in the image. Uh, and so you want to remove that. Let me show you guys a quick example of another place where I use this. Now one photo where you'll see this a lot in my edits and how I added a little bit more depth by making the background less contrasty and the foreground more contrasty is in this photo. So this is essentially the raw photo. It's just got a couple corrections and sliders on it. This is the edited photo. Now look at the two back to back. And I want you to specifically look right in here. Look how low contrast those mountains are in the edit right in here, before, after, before, after. So I've added a little bit of glow, which in turn reduced the contrast, but it helps to add a lot of depth. But you can see I've reduced the contrast over here. I've reduced the contrast in here. Uh, but in here, I've increased the contrast 
and here the contrast has increased. So notice the foreground, the contrast has increased, but everywhere else in the image, I've decreased the amount of contrast. And this doesn't just have to be done with the contrast slider. You can do this uh, by simply just brightening or increasing the exposure in the background and decreasing it in the foreground. There's a, a bunch of different ways to do this. So. Let me show you guys how to do this in Photoshop here, uh, which I will show you on the same image as I talked about before. So probably the best way to do this in Photoshop is gonna be to open up a curves layer. And what I wanna do with this curves layer, let me actually close out this navigator so I can get the curves a little larger. So what I wanna do is reduce the contrast in the background first. So let's go ahead and increase on this bottom, just like we did in Lightroom and decrease on the top. That's going to reduce the contrast. Then I'm going to hit Command I on a Mac or Control I on a PC to invert that layer mask. Then I'm gonna to switch to a white brush here and I'm just gonna paint over and I can paint with like 20% opacity so I'll hit two on the keyboard or you can adjust it up there. And I will just paint through right through here and show you just like that we're adjusting the contrast in the background there. Again, we're trying to add more depth. So you can also go ahead and create a folder. This would be probably the way that I would like to do it. And I'm gonna put this layer mask onto that group and then I'm going to put this curves into that group slash folder. Now, anything that I put in this folder, this layer mask will be applied to it. So I can also go in and add like a hue saturation just so that I can bring my saturation back up through there. And that's looking pretty good. Maybe a little bit less saturation. Now we can even go through here with a brush if you wanted to touch up some particular spots. So I created a new layer down here. I'm gonna change this to soft light blend mode. I'm gonna click over here to get black and white. I'm gonna pull my white to the foreground. And then I'm just gonna go in here and click a couple times. Now you can see how that worked in very quickly. So maybe I wanna go down to like 10 or so percent opacity and just click in through here. Now we're not technically adjusting any slider that says curves, but what we're doing here is we're just brightening the background. Uh, and when we're brightening it, we're inherently uh, lowering the amount of contrast unless we're darkening something else. So as I just click through here, you can get rid of a lot of that contrast back there. I can even come over here and get rid of some of the contrast in that mid ground. And maybe you can hear the mouse clicking, maybe not, but I'm just going through here and I'm hitting all of these little spots. Just like that, you can see how much we've done there. Now I can go and come in. If I wanted to brighten some of these spots in the foreground, I could do that as well. The foreground contrast is looking pretty good, I think though. Uh, so I'll probably leave it just like that. You can see I made a few adjustments there. Now I can create a new group or folder and do the same thing to the foreground. I'm gonna put a layer mask on here, Command I to invert. And then I can just go in with my brush here. Let's do 40% opacity. And I'm just gonna paint on the foreground here. And you can see over there on the right side of the screen that we are painting on the layer mask. So now anything within group two is going to affect the foreground. Now what I like to do with my foregrounds here in Photoshop, grab my curves layer. You can see it's inside this group, so it's only going to be applied to that foreground. Uh, what I like to do is add a little bit of contrast. This one already has a lot of contrast, but I'm gonna show you guys a really cool trick. So I'm gonna drag down on this lower quarter and up on the top quarter. It's gonna add contrast, but now you're probably noticing it's getting too dark. So what I actually do is go down here on the bottom. You don't wanna drag this too high up or else you get this weird look going on. But if you drag this till the output is like somewhere between one and 10, depending on the photo, you can really bring back a little bit of that detail and make that pop really nice. I think that's looking good. So I like the sunlight here. You can also, if you're finding your highlights are getting blown out, you can drag this down from the top. If you're finding your highlights are getting blown out, you can drag this from right here, just down a hair. And now we're looking pretty good. So let me toggle these adjustments here. This was before, this is after, before, after. So again, Lightroom and Photoshop both have really effective ways to do this. I wanted to show both just because I don't know what your guys' workflow is, but a lot of you guys are in Lightroom, a lot of you are in Photoshop. So now you can just add this to your workflow. So you can do this to a photo that you've already edited, or you can do it to a photo that you're in the process of editing. But 
like I said, you want to make sure that background is low contrast, that foreground is high contrast. That will help you show off a lot of depth in your image. One more time here, we've got the before and then we've got the after. Hey, well, thank you all so much for checking out this video. I really, really do hope that it was helpful. If it was, leave me a thumbs up and subscribe. Let me know down below in the comments as well, and I will always do my best to get back to you guys. I truly, really do wanna help you guys become better at photography. So if you have questions, please ask away. Thank you again, everybody, for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.